Google's now a mortgage broker in California. The FAA says you gotta register your drone. These Star Wars trailers won't quit spoiling the movie and more. It's Monday, November 23rd, and this is Crunch Report. Hello everyone, happy Monday! Google is now a licensed mortgage broker in the state of California, as if it couldn't do everything already. After announcing the product earlier this year, the company partnered with Zillow and LendingTree to launch a mortgage comparison tool for people looking to buy a home here in the Sunshine State. And it says support for more states is also coming soon. Now this is an actual commercial product based on a flexible cost per lead or CPL model. The Google tool launches under Google's Compare brand, which also has an auto insurance comparison tool underway. Google already offers a similar mortgage service tool in the UK. It's pretty basic, really. Google Compare walks you through zip codes and home prices and down payments and how long you plan to live in the house, 30-year mortgages, all that stuff, and then recommends a lender based on your preferences, plus fees associated with that loan. At that point, you can request a callback right from Google's site using an anonymous number so your contact info isn't shared with the lender. Good work, Google. Earlier this month, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, put a task force together to make sense of how a drone registration service would work in the US. Now that task force published its report today, and it seems as though, yes, you soon will have to register your drone before you're allowed to fly it if your drone weighs more than 250 grams, which is about nine ounces, which is most camera drones. The task force also says that registration itself, which should be free, should also happen through a website or app, and the registration data should be made available to third parties through an API. One registration number should also cover all the drones owned by one person, if you happen to own a collection of them, even non-citizens, as long as the registrant is 13 years or older. Registration doesn't have to happen at the point of sale, but does have to happen before a drone goes into the air. Now, the FAA and the Department of Transportation will now review all of these recommendations and then turn them into rules, supposedly, before Christmas. WordPress.com, which is the fully hosted version of WordPress, just got a colossally big update. It was codenamed Calypso up until now. I wish they still called it that. WordPress.com is now fully separated from the WordPress core. That's what's different. It sits on an admin interface that interacts with the WordPress core just like any other third-party interface and app would. The stack is also switched from PHP and MySQL to JavaScript and API calls. So now, when you go to the website, the server offers a fully working WordPress client that mostly runs in your browser and works better on your phone or your tablet. Now, if you're already happy with how WordPress.com works, think of it as one more option if you're using a hosted WordPress.com blog, a self-hosted WordPress with Jetpack plugin, or like we do at TechCrunch, a WordPress VIP site. Oh, and there's a new Mac app too with Windows and Linux apps in the works. Now, maybe you don't use WordPress at all, but this will still affect you because consider this, 25% of the web today runs on WordPress. That is a very wide reach. Good news for Android developers. Google just launched version 2.0 of its Android Studio Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. Now for you non-devs, that's what everybody uses to write Android apps. Android Studio is based on IntelliJ and launched back in 2013 with a code editor, code analysis tools, emulators for all of Google's Android platforms, pretty much everything. Now with this update, Google's made deployment speeds a lot faster, up to 2.5x at times and a new feature called Instant Run lets developers build and deploy their apps once and then change their code and deploy to see the changes running in the app. It's sort of like writing HTML, so you write your code, and then you reload your browser, and then you see what's changed. Google's also offering new emulators that should run faster than any physical device, that's good for devs, and certain trigger actions like firing up the camera will be snappier too with a completely rebuilt interface. In case you weren't watching last night's horrific peek into the demise of modern music, AKA the American Music Awards, you might have also missed the latest Star Wars Episode 7 teaser that aired during the show. 
Which makes me wonder if Disney might as well just show us the whole damn movie before opening day, but hey, that's just me. If you did masochistically watch the American Music Awards, boy, it's gotten bad. You know that the show itself, which is obviously a show about the celebration of music, also featured a full scene clip from the Star Wars movie, and then also featured an acapella group called Pentatonix singing the famous Star Wars score on stage, which was cool, but weird. Just cool and weird, I don't know what else to say. If you're keeping score, we've now received several trailers on the ABC network, a new Star Wars video game, a BB-8 droid toy made by Sphero, Oh, and a record for most advanced theater tickets ever sold. And we still have a few more weeks to go. No big deal. And that is the report for today. I'm Sarah Lane. Crunch Report airs every weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. We love having you. Thanks for coming and joining us. You can also find us on iTunes and on YouTube, and we'll see you all tomorrow.